And we will flip the board around again, featuring the same opening. A53 in your encyclopedia of, excuse me, A54. A54 in your Encyclopedia of Chess openings. This is the Tabia for the Ukrainian variation. And Pologaevsky played E4. And E takes D4 is the reply. Queen takes D4. And this time Knight to C6. And this is the first time we've seen Knight to C6. Out of all six examples. Usually the Knight coming to D7. Queen of D2. This seems like a strange square to place the queen upon. But no doubt he's planning... Oops, didn't mean to pick up the queen. No doubt he's planning on B3 followed by bishop to B2. Because that comes up often. G6, and there it is. B3, bishop G7, bishop B2. castles and yes there's an enormous development advantage for well enormous might be a bigger word than should be used but there is a development advantage now this move knight to g4 i'm not real clear on the purpose of it why not continue your development here Just because you don't have a good where to put him, maybe? The only place you could put the bishop, I guess, right now is C, uh, D7. And he might want to wait to decide. So he plays knight to G4. Just because you don't have a good where to put him, maybe? The only place you could put the bishop, I guess, right now is C, uh, D7. And he might want to wait to decide. And, and we... So he plays knight to G4. We're now looking at the game that has been dubbed by many, Nets-Metanov's um, Immortal. And queen h4. What an aggressive move this is. Knight blocks on g3. What we teach our kids to do, playing against a, a scholar's mate, um, is to simply play the g-man out and send the queen packing. But Pologaevsky chose... Knight to g3. I, don't, I think, personally, g3 makes more sense to me than knight to g3. Mate. Holes and weaknesses. However, you know, allowing that queen to stay in your house is probably never going to be a good idea. Send them packing. Just as if somebody's going to play the, the scholar's mate against you, you would play g6, send them packing. Um, plus, because your king hasn't castled yet, you can always castle to the queen's side and get him out of, out of any dodge that might be created by that weakness. 
So I, I, I prefer G3 to Knight F, uh, Knight to G3 here, excuse me. And here, here I think you can really exploit this. By immediately attacking. Immediately attacking. If he captures here, you're going to get into his house. If he flees to e4, you're going to take on f5. If he trades, you're more than happy to trade because now you've got this clear path wide open. Boom. And now what? You can't move the knight. I have to block with this knight. And now rook takes f5. Can't be captured. Because if you capture, look where you look what you're doing. You're opening that pathway again. Why not pin the bishop first? Which bishop? Oh, here? Because you need this rook to do it. And you want to keep this rook on this file. So that's that's in my opinion. All right, but he didn't play any of that. He played knight to g3 and black played knight g to e5. But if I'm black in this position, I'm going to punish him for this move and try to start launching this up. Now, Jerry from Chess Network also showed a, a long, drawn-out alternative line that you might want to check out, but I don't remember off the top of my head what it was, and I didn't write it down. I didn't want to cover the same ground he covered. But Jerry from Chess Network has just a single video on this game. We've shown all six Nets-Metanov wins with the Ukrainian variation. So knight g to e5, castles to the king's side. And now f5 was played. My opinion, a move too late. I love that knight being on g4 with my queen in his house. Now speaking of creating weaknesses, f3 is played here. Bishop to h6 puts the question to the queen. Can he play f4? Oops, didn't mean to pick up that pawn. Can f4, is f4 a move here? I guess the knight can come back to g4. Alright, so anyway, queen to d1 and f for baby. Knight g to e2. And guess what? g5. You can take the light square bishop. Okay, where are we at? And win a pawn. Here? Are we talking about here? Oh, earlier, if f4 here, f4 here, yeah. If he play, if white plays f4, uh, I actually prefer getting my knight back up here and creating this kind of heat. Let's, go, we'll look at your line here in a moment. If he plays h3, the knight is hanging. 
And even though he gets your knight, it's probably not too comfortable having him in your house like this. But BB says, how about knight takes bishop and then capture the F man? That seems fairly reasonable. All right, so anyway, this pawn storm is coming. Pawn to f4, knight to e2, knight from g to e2 specifically. g5, now knight to d5. And now g4. I heard a cheer. Thank you for the cheers. All right, so anyway, this pawn storm is coming. Pawn to f4, knight to e2, knight from g to e2 specifically. g5, now knight to d5. And now g4. I heard... Queen to h3 beckons unto me by this move. What if queen to h3... Knight takes, bishop takes. Um, don't don't break your pawn shield. Take it with the knight. But then you might be able to sack your rook here. And then what happens here is you've got this. Can he take this the sacrifice? It's very risky to take this sacrifice because of g3. And now you're threatening. You have to defend that somehow. Well, he's threatening checkmate here. Don't forget this. He's check he's threatening checkmate right here so this checkmate has to be defended so how does white defend it doesn't matter how he defends he can't defend with the rook he cannot defend with the rook because you just lose your rook to the pawn so he'd have to defend with the queen to one of these three squares and it doesn't matter which one he goes to, then the knight can take the bishop because the queen is, becomes overworked. The queen cannot defend the bishop as well as the checkmate threat. And for that reason, I think that probably pays off... Um, pays off for the black pieces. And there's your compensation. Anyway, let's get back to the actual game. He did not play queen of h3. He played f takes g3, h takes g3, and then queen h3. And now f4. All right, so he's attacking the knight. Well, here's the problem here. Knight... I'm trying to remember here. I, I think I just understood why why that knight is standing on d5 and why bishop to e6 is important. Okay, so knight f3 is being recommended in chat. With knight f3, I believe the king can escape somewhere. So, okay, he can't escape there now. Okay. Knight f3, queen h2 check. The king has to go to e3. But where's your continuation here? Okay, right now the king is kind of confined, but where's your continuation? 
All right, I've, all the royal squares are cut off. I admit that. But how do you add an attacker now to the king? Sack the rook on f4. G takes f4. And I don't think this is going to hold for you. What's your continuation from here? You just a little bit short because he's got so many defenders. So the rook sack does not seem sound. F4 from this position is defended one, two, three, four times. And you don't have enough attackers. You need more attackers than defenders. He didn't see the knight. F4 from this position is defended. Has petered out. There's nothing left here for black to do. And actually white is the one now in control of this game. Look at these attackers bearing down. Look at this pawn front here. Black's bishop and rook are presently out of play. And knight c to e5 here. Knight c to e5 is recommended. But where are you going with your queen? So now the only way to save the queen is to come to g2. And I think he can just keep attacking now. So there you have that. So I don't think that can be played. Coming back to what was actually played. Bishop to e6 is going to deal with this knight. Bishop to c2. And now we're going to build up the rook pressure. Well, the rook f7 has a subtle purpose also you can try to get his king out of dodge he wants to try to run away if you want to really see some good notes on this as well um midnight rhino check out the chess network video on this game because he's got a lot of keen observations that he really put time into I'm just actually looking at this for the first time. So king to e3. And now bishop takes d5. Now the whole purpose of rook f7 was not simply to create a square to build a battery, but now you can see how important that rook is because were it not for this rook the queen could capture here with tempo and, and throw in a, a, a check so instead he plays c takes d5 knight to b4 and now rook to h1 and I don't think anybody saw this move coming, except for K.E. Bishop. Oh, but he probably saw it coming because he just gave us the link to the chessgames.com. I would never have seen this move. I would never have found this move. This is quite the move. He's saying, here, go ahead and take my queen. Because you're going to pay. 
when rook takes h2, and you know he saw, calculated this whole line. Rook to f3 check. Now this diagonal is cut off. It forces the king further toward black's house. How do you find these kinds of moves? So after knight to b4, it seems like a3 needs to be played. So what looks like a great move turns out to be a nightmare. I'm going to take your queen, but hey, you can have my queen because of this. Your king is forced to d4. Look at the royal squares that are under black's control. If white can if black can safely give a check, it is checkmate. It is checkmate. Now, so far he can't safely give that, but if he plays c5 here, there's only one legal move. And remember what we said about en passant earlier. This pawn becomes eligible for en passant. The only legal move is to capture that en passant. B5 cuts off C4 to free up the knight on E5. To deliver checkmate if if uh, white is not careful so checkmate is being threatened right now checkmate is being threatened the only legal move any move other than bishop d3 any other move will result in checkmate with knight e takes c6 is checkmate. So bishop d3 must be played to create a flea square for the king. And the knight still plays and forces him there. Then bishop g7 would give check. This is all analysis now. This is not the game that was played. And now you've got this mess. So you could see white's going to win back his material. And in fact, after king e1 here, he doesn't even have to win it back right away. If he tries to save his queen, he's going to lose that rook, and it can't be recaptured. So what actually happened in the game, however? Let's take a look. All that was pretty much discussion. So after rook to f3, king to d4... Nitzmetanov actually did not play c5 here. He played bishop to g7. And a4 was played. And that is losing for sure. c5, check. And as you can see here, I'm guessing, okay, the purpose of a4, he probably saw this idea of cutting off the king from c5. Uh, c4, excuse me, with b5. 
So maybe a4 was to stop b5 from being played. Oh, John Nunn said to prevent that a4, the purpose of a4 is to prevent b5. Yeah, okay. Thank you for that, Midnight Rhino. Thank you for those comments. John Nunn. All right, so c5, en passant, is played. Take it with the b-man. Ready to step in. Bishop to d3. Knight e takes d3 with a discovered check. Forcing the king to c4. D5 check. E takes D5. C takes D5, forcing the king to B5. <laughs> Rook to B8, forcing the king to A5. Knight to C6, forcing the king to A6, which was never played on the board. He went ahead and resigned here. Why you would resign now and not f six moves ago, I'm not sure. Unless he's just now seeing the checkmate. And knight to... What do we like better? That you can take your pick of checkmates. I was going to say knight to b4, knight d to b4. You could also play this this knight to c5. You allow the combo as an honor so it gets on the record. Yeah, but okay, but what I'm saying is why not just let him finish it off? Why not why resign one move before the I agree with that statement. So then why not just play the last move and let him play the checkmate? I want to know which checkmate he would have chosen. <laughs> uh, I think I would have chosen, to me, the prettiest one is knight d to b4. Because it puts these two knights in tandem with each other. And that's aesthetically pleasing. These two knights side by side. I personally, the one that appeals to me most is knight D to B4. Let's let's hear it. What do you guys like? Uh, a B in, uh, agrees with me. Knight B4. Knight D B4. Just looks geometrically and aesthetically pleasing to the chess eye. <laughs> 